what's up guys, Tyler here, and I got a great question from my man Waleed today, and Waleed wants to know how to incorporate Olympic lifting into your program. Where should they be placed in my workout, okay? So Olympic lifting is a very awesome way to exercise, but you have to understand how complicated these movements are. And if you don't respect that, there's a good chance you're gonna mess yourself up doing these exercises wrong, okay? So first rule of Olympic lifting, get some coaching. Find somebody who can coach the Olympic lifts, which honestly is rarer than you think, right? I've been studying the Oli lifts for several years now and I barely feel qualified to coach people in them. So find a coach, find some videos, go to a seminar, get some solid tips because there's a lot of dumb shit that people do all the time thinking that they're Olympic lifting when really they're just destroying their body. Right? Like I'll give you a simple example is the shoulder joint, right? When we do overhead stuff, snatches, jerks, we wanna keep our armpit facing forward. Most people, they do overhead squats and you'll see them rotate their, their elbow pits forward and their armpits downward, their shoulder forward, so that they can get that extra little bit of mobility out of their overhead squat. Well, guess what? If you're doing that, you're going to hurt your shoulder. So stop. Don't do any overhead Olympic lifts like snatches or jerks until you can do a perfect overhead squat with your armpits facing forward and your elbow pits facing each other inward, all right? So that's just one thing I see constantly going wrong, drives me insane, okay? So get a coach, get some coaching, go to a seminar, get some tips, all right? Because it's so damn important, especially with the Olympic lifts. Now, with the lifts themselves, you can do this two ways. If you wanna prioritize the Olympic lifts and you wanna become really genuinely strong at them, then you have to do them as your workout, not in addition to your workout. What I mean by that is you can't be doing ring training and hand balancing and Olympic lifting and blah, blah, blah. The only way you're gonna be able to pull that off and actually make progress is if you're exercising many hours a day and that is your job. You're treating exercise, fitness, movement as your job. There's nothing wrong with that if that's you, that's fine. I, I encourage you to do and follow your passion, but if you're trying to do Olympic lifting, high intensity training, uh, crossfit stuff, body weight training, uh, kettlebells, all in one session in an hour, three days a week, uh, you're not gonna really make a lot of gains, all right? So if you're gonna prioritize it, then prioritize it. Do snatches one day, do squats the next day, do cleans the next day, do squats the next day, do jerks the next day, and repeat that cycle every single week and work on your strength and your skill and especially your mobility flexibility in all of the Olympic lifting positions, okay? Now that's a way to prioritize it, is just literally five days a week, do the Olympic lifts. Work on them like crazy. And you could type in um, Greg Everett, an Olympic lifting coach that I trust, Type in Greg Everett Olympic lifting. He's got some killer books with some killer programs specifically related to Olympic lifting, all right? Now, if you wanna add Olympic lifting into your program and you just wanna do them because they're fun and you're trying to do something new, then the best way to do this is to pick the lifts that you like and you wanna practice and alternate them on your workout days. So practice the skill of the movement. So you're doing snatches, for example. Practice some skill work with a dowel or a light barbell, work on the technique, and then work up to a weight that is within your two to five rep max, okay? And consistently work up to that weight, work up to that weight, and you can use a periodized cycle if you find a good book on the subject where you can work up to you know, 70% of your one rep max the first week, 80, 80%, 85%, 90%, 95%, 100, 105%, and then cycle back down and repeat the cycle. That's a good way to do things. Or you can just stay at that top level, 80, 80 to 95%, and then once a month work up to that max and then readjust, okay? So adding the Olympic lifts in before your regular workouts is a good thing to do, but you're not gonna make as much progress as if you focus on them 100%. But that being said, if you spend 15 minutes on these lifts, so a few minutes of warm-ups, a few minutes of moderate weights, really working on skill, and then a few minutes of higher intensity lifts and still working on that skill and technique, you can get some benefit from it, okay? So if you're gonna add the Olympic lifts in to your workouts, your existing workouts, put them before everything else. They're high skill, high neurological movements. You need to use your brain and your nerves to be able to explode and catch everything with all that technique and power all at the same time. And then if you really wanna get good at them, prioritize them. Just give yourself 90 days, six months, where you focus just on the Olympic lifts. And if you wanna add a little bit of high intensity stuff in there, do some rope skip or some rower or some quick sprints and call it a day, all right? 
That's my take on what you should do with Olympic lifts. Get coaching, focus on it, or if you want to, just add one lift before your workout, focus on getting stronger and working on skill. That's it, that's all you gotta do, all right? If you guys dig this video, like it, leave a comment below, let me know what you think about the Olympic lifts. When should you add them into your workout and what is the best way to train on these Olympic lifts? If you guys have any questions, you can also post them below. I'll make a custom video just like this to help you look, feel, and perform your best, all right? Thanks for watching.